All right, part two battle the big blocks for back again. After getting beat up with the Nova by the Buick GSX, I decided to become the GSX. So, there it is, the Buick GSX, one of the most legendary German motors muscle cars. Chevelle's overrated. This is the top of the top, cream of the crop GM car. Why? 510 foot-pounds of torque. That's 10 more than the 454 LS6. The GSX 455 Stage 1 is a, definitely a menace on the streets and will take out anything and also beat me in the, the previous race if you've seen the previous video uh, you know check it out little Drina 6 couldn't handle the 455 stage 1 power he even had a rare stage 2 uh, option and I believe there was even stage 3 prototype drag cars uh, built at the time that ran like high 9 quarter miles uh, like 136 miles an hour or some ridiculous number like that obviously nine second quarter miles are a little different today because engines make their power bands uh, a lot higher the power is a lot higher they just achieve those numbers so much more easily whereas the Buick it would have a very low torque and horsepower number like two or three thousand maybe four thousand five thousand rpms and then dip off pretty rapidly so it's all low end running. Anyway, this is a continuation from that video. This time I have the lead. You see my friend still in the GTX. And now I'm in the GSX. And the way that the power band is, um, or just the RPM tachometer is laid out, you have a massive, you go very deep into the red, like a massive red chunk you can go into to go to 6,000 RPMs. It's very deceptive, I guess. And that's a given, given that this is a 3-speed automatic car that's stock uh, from the factory. They couldn't find a manual car, I guess, and it's the same problem with the Oldsmobile, her sold, and that one has an automatic car because that one's got a 3-speed. The 3-speeds were automatics and the 4-speeds were uh, manuals. Because they had a manual car to begin with, because then that would have been a faster car and it would have been more competitive in baseline testing. Here on Silverstone, very high speed track, I go very wide, very easily. Up into the Beckett's part of the track. A lot of second and third gear interplay right here. And you can see the dominance of the GSX. I mean, you saw the the previous race where he just pulled away, and it's it's just a dream for the uh, homologation specs that this car has. This might it might be the best car out of all the cars that are in the lineup, just because how much power it has. Its weight, I guess, initially is very high, close to four thousand pounds, but there might be some weight reductions in the homologation. I didn't modify it um, in any way, shape, or form other than just clicking the A button up to homologate it. And we easily come into the last lap of the race. This color Saturn White is a very iconic color too, along with the... Uh, uh, no, it's Saturn Yellow and Apollo White. So this is Apollo White. Very unique strike package, very unique spoiler that was actually sculpted for functionality to be aerodynamic. Now here we have um, a very rare number of these were built, I think it was just underneath a thousand, like 958. Majority were manuals, very little were automatics. Um, the GS could also be had with the Stage 1 package as well, so you didn't have to get the GSX, which was a very flashy car at the time. The GS had a Stage 1 option in it. There was also a documentary on the Buick GSX on classic muscle cars. Uh, from two, the early 2000s, they would always do documentaries on classic muscle cars, and uh, there was an interview with one of the owners who deliberately went to a Buick dealership down south and... Uh, requested that he would get a manual in his uh, Buick GS Stage 1 convertible 
I think it was a uh, 69 or 70, I can't remember, it was a black car. And uh, they, had to, they had to send that order all the way up to the factory in order to get that done, even though it wasn't listed as a factory option for that car at the dealership. The guy wanted the manual, so he got it, and that's the only one in existence. And you'll see it in that video. The Stage 1 option also continued in the 71 and so did the GSX, but uh, GM didn't really try to man out the uh, emissions crisis and the oil embargoes. They just stooped down to meet insurance regulations immediately right after 1970. It was an all-out year for GM, and then after that it all went downhill, I guess. You could say that. They made better handling, more luxurious cars throughout the 70s, but they're not the same as the uh, muscle cars. Chevelles, GTOs, 442s, and this all went downhill. Same with the Cadillac 500, they only made like 180 or 190 horsepower for its ridiculous engine size, and they made that up until 75. 76, probably. 75, 76. So that's race one, that was holding off for the lead as long as possible with the right car, right people, right time, right place, right time type deal. So, had to do some uh, editing to get rid of uh, bulk footage in between the menus and the race. So this is the final race on Virginia International Raceway, short circuit in the middle of the night in muscle cars, which is not going to be very good because nobody knows where they're going and this track rarely pops up on the roster so easy victory for me I guess you could say if that's the case because I've raced on this track in a Shelby Cobra doing some chop char laps uh, also in the beginning of the career mode doing um, uh, championship races for that too so here we come up you think it's very easy this is the nail biter section of the track that gets everybody right here. It's very deceptive to be doing 100 miles an hour in an old car and then have to romp on the brakes. And you see it gets me a little bit, but at least I didn't hit the wall because then that would have been a real uh, screw up on my part. And you can see one person already left and now we're down to seven racers. We had eight to begin with. And I'm just chasing for the lead on the, the front stretch, which is a very twisty section. This is a really hard spot to do. Because uh, you can't, it's a blind over the crest series of S curves that you have to aim your car straight down in order to get the best uh, line out of. Even though I cut the lap time, it proved to get me the position. So it paid off, in my opinion. Even though it's wrong, you need to go as straight as possible in order to be winning races. Uh, here we come up to the difficult part, difficult uh, S-curve or chicane, this is a chicane, and then we go into the final straightaway. Just gotta make sure everything's correct and you gotta go really slow in these cars. You, fi you think that just because they're C-class and you have all the acceleration, sometimes you can get confused and think that you're driving like a 90s car or 2000s car that has the handling to back it up with these cars even with uh, modern radial tires still don't have the handling to back up the amount of power that they put out it's still a big number 400 horsepower and 510 foot pounds of torque I say 400 because even though it's rated at 360 from the uh, Forza Reigns it's still a very downplayed number by General Motors it was more close to like a 420 on dyno numbers, if you ever do any research looking at real power figures, same can be said with 426. Hemi is making more power than they were from the factory. Um, Ford was very conservative with their 335 horsepower ratings that were probably way close to or above 400. Ford was extremely conservative out of the big three manufacturers. ZL1 uh, Coco Corvettes and stuff like that, they make probably a hundred more horsepower than advertised. And even beyond that, it's all to get around insurance regulations. GSX also had a problem with the uh, this, 
the headers built in the suspension components because the block is a very wide angled block. So this is a very wide casting would be the best way to describe it. Much like the Oldsmobile, the Buick motor is very wide and takes up a large width of the engine bay and that leaves the headers going right next to the bushings of the suspension and it could light on fire or even melt componentry like all the rubber parts and then you have no front suspension. That was just a problem with the motor really. The design of the motor didn't really fit the, the uh, compartment of the A-body. That was pretty bad. Other than that, it's a fast car. This is one of the three fastest cars at Super Street Nationals. Back in the 1980s, there would only be three cars that would win the, the championship or the drag racing series. Muscle Machines holds it. Um, it would be this, the Buick GSX, the Plymouth Roadrunner, it doesn't matter if it's 68, 69, 70, and the Plymouth Cuda with the Hemi. And the Plymouth Roadrunner's got to have the Hemi as well. So it's the Hemi Roadrunner and Hemi Cuda versus the Buick GSX. They were the fastest uh, ET times. They were getting low 13s, high 12s with proper tuning. And they were stock, I believe. Um, they didn't put any slicks on them, otherwise they'd be running like low 12s, high 11s. They were just doing some tune-up tricks and they were running on stock polyglass tires. And they're still able to run a pretty impressive time. Five seconds is still fast from 0 to 60, even to this day. They see that the grid uh, got cut down to four people who decided to still care. But luckily my memorization paid off for the night circuit. And we're going to overlap uh, some guys. Head on to the final lap. Coming to the final stretch of this uh, race, and you see the sun is coming up, and that helps out with visibility. As before, I had to deal with a pretty much a dark piece of earth to look at from third person when driving. It, it, it makes it look easy when watching it, but it's all memory, like where the turns are. That's the biggest advice I can give doing this: is just try to track on the day and memorize the turns. That way, at night, it becomes easier. Or even do it at night just to memorize everything. Going into the chicane again. Whip it around the corner and flog it all the way past the straightaway. So, if you like what you see here, uh, like, comment, and subscribe for more content. So, this is uh, Crash Distance. Check it out again. We'll see you in the next one.